Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Learn Together program. My name is Eva. Thank you for joining us uh, in our program, uh, which was initiated by Microsoft Croatia with the intention to bring exceptional educational projects closer to teachers and educators across Europe. Today, our guest is uh, Mr. Julien Yanas, if I pronounce that correctly, from Paris, France. Uh, Julien will talk about the use of video games in education and the innovative education program that uh, his academy runs. Uh, Julien also participated at Microsoft Innovative Education Forum in Berlin in 2010 with one of his projects. Um, of course, you will have a chance to ask questions after his presentation. Uh, Julien, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to hold a webinar. It is a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, before we start, uh, Mr. Darko Jurekovic, Partners in Learning Manager for Microsoft Croatia, is here with, uh, with us to welcome all the participants. Darko? Thank you, Eva. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for taking time to participate in this live meeting webinar held today. Uh, Julien, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you are the first French teacher presenting uh, your projects uh, to this broader community of educators across Europe. This initiative started uh, because we wanted to present projects from innovative educators for us to the audience that was not able to physically attend events held in Berlin last year and Moscow this year. So please continue. I find this topic very interesting and I hope that we shall learn a lot how to use the games in education to enhance the teaching and learning experience in our schools. Thank you very much. So, hi everybody. I hope that you are, um, uh, you can hear me. Um, so, um, first I will, um, I will introduce myself. Uh, because I'm, um, I'm a, a former teacher, uh, I taught uh, history and geography, and I'm uh, in, a, in a PhD now uh, on education sciences, and uh, my focus is on um, the development of a pedagogical resource in a game-based learning. So um, um, I'm not really at ease with, uh, with theory, uh, and research, but um, I'm I'm uh, directing some uh, projects in uh, in developing serious game for education and and uh, directing a community. So uh, I hope that I uh, I will be a valuable uh, embedded observer, and I uh, will uh, try to share my uh, my experience with you. Uh, two years ago, I, I created a community of practice called uh, Peda Game. Uh, this community um, gathered uh, teachers, researchers, and uh, some entrepreneurs focused on uh, game-based learning uh, practice. After that, um, I, um, I took a position as the director of Edu Game Lab, which is a French institute for video game and education. And it's now a, a European Union, Union uh, funded uh, project uh, in the lifelong learning uh, program. I also manage um, uh, a community uh, in uh, my school district, and uh, it's, uh, the, the, the name of the school district is Académie Créte, which is one of the, um, the bigger uh, French school districts with 1 million students and 80,000 teachers. And uh, recently, in January, uh, I was appointed the national advisor on, on game-based learning for the French Department of Education. And uh, I'm in charge of, um, of uh, creating um, a database, uh, collecting good, good resources and uh, good practice on, uh, on game-based learning. So I will, um, I will begin with a definition of the game-based learning. Uh, to keep it um, simple, it's uh, teaching and learning using technologies formed uh, from the, the game industry. Um, it's, uh, it's really popular now, thanks to um, some American researchers like uh, Jean Paul G, Jean Paul G uh, Katie Salen, uh, Eric Klopfer um, from uh, the MIT, Kevin Pauline, uh, Mark Prinsky, and uh, David Williamson uh, Schaeffer. These uh, researchers are from the 
uh, University of uh, Arizona, of uh, Wisconsin Madison, and New York University, and um, other uh, uh, other labs uh, in the in the U.S. Um, in fact, the um, the game game based learning is now uh, uh, popular, but um, it was quite uh, underground in the in the 2000s. Um, the first big wave in the 90s was about uh, edutainment, so it was um, a mix uh, between exercise and and gaming, the edutainment uh, products. So you have to do you have to do an exercise, and you can you are reward, rewarded with a, a period of a, of gaming. But in the in the 2000s, there is a new uh, concept, a new product that is emerging uh, called the the service game. The service game it's um, supposed to be uh, the perfect uh, hybrid hybrid between uh, gaming and uh, and learning, teaching, or or providing information. So there is no more uh, exercise in one uh, in one side and uh, fun in the other side. The series game aim is to mix the two uh, the two concepts. Um, so from some great um, uh, research was uh, was conducted in the uh, in the early 2000s. The um, the first one was called Games to Teach by the uh, MIT. Uh, you can um, you can search for keywords like Education Archive uh, or Games to Teach to find the website and uh, some reports and, uh, and materials. They um, they developed a mod which is um, a special level of a role playing game. Uh, the role playing game is never win tonight, and they they develop the the mode called Revolution. Uh, this mode is about uh, teaching uh, the American Revolution using a role playing game. The second uh, 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 study uh, was um, conducted by the Future Lab, which is uh, an agency of the Becta, the uh, in the UK. Uh, the name of the, the of this uh, study is uh, teaching with games, and the purpose of this study was to introduce uh, commercial video games in uh, the classroom. So they used um, some really popular uh, video games of the early 2000s, like um, uh, Knights of Honor, um, uh, some uh, tycoons uh, simulation uh, strategies uh, games uh, and uh, the things the things uh, series of uh, video game. Um, the third one, which is more uh, interest in interesting for us, is the European Schoolnet reports called Games in Schools. Uh, which was uh, initiate, initiated in uh, 2008, and the report is uh, available uh, on the internet. So, in, a, in, a, in your browser, if you search for games in schools, European school match, you will reach the website with the, the material. Um, but there is a there is a, a gap uh, in game based learning between the the U between Europe and uh, and the U.S. and so the uh, North of America. In uh, in New York, for instance, they are developing um, curriculum, and uh, they opened uh, in uh, in 2009. They opened a school called uh, Quest to Learn, uh, uh, and in this school. You, the teachers uh, are teaching all the subjects using games, creating games, uh, uh, gaming with the with the students, and uh, also in the in the US you have a lot of labs like the Game for Learning Institute or uh, Pistemi Games, uh, which are really focused on uh, on game based learning, and there is no such um, labs in uh, in Europe. 
uh, labs that are really uh, well known at a global scale. But you have some uh, some institution like the Engage Learning um, Initiative, uh, which is a really interesting uh, initiative. So you can you can check for EngageLearning.eu to find the website. It's managed by the um, uh, researchers called the Match Up Event, which is uh, one of the of the initiator of the new wave of uh, game-based learning in Europe. There is also the Danish School for Education, and of course, uh, I will mention the Consolarium, uh, directed by Derek Rudelson and Oli Gray. And uh, Oli Gray made a, a webinar about um, his uh, about uh, his work. But the, um, the fact is, in France, it's really uh, emerging, and there is no strong practice. And uh, research fields uh, on game-based learning, on game-based uh, learning, or even in uh, uh, in game studies, it's not mature and not structured. So it's it's difficult for teachers to work alone without support from research in uh, uh, in uh, this kind of uh, game-based learning project. So I will uh, I will go on with um, with um, a focus on the on the research. There is um, some proof really uh, popular and uh, almost everybody uh, agrees about that. Um, uh, video games are good for motivation, immersion, attention, uh, visualization, memorization, uh, emotional learning. Um, to provide information right in time to the to the learners, uh, to uh, uh, the learners with video game benefit from a progressive difficulty. Uh, you can um, you can uh, build uh, uh, pedagogical sequences uh, based on individualization. You are learning by doing. You are experiencing situated learning. You are. Um, you are um, uh, progressing and uh, improving yourself in, uh, in system thinking and computational thinking with uh, with video game. All the the researchers I, I mentioned, I mentioned like Jim Pulsky, Mark uh, provided some uh, strong um, uh, information and uh, research about this this points. Uh, but the more the more documented uh, point, the the thing that were really um, uh, 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 in the in the heart of a uh, good research was uh, about uh, I N coordination, for for instance. So these points are really specific, really technical, and it's not uh, interesting interesting for uh, educators like uh, like us. So um, we, we need other other uh, research uh, projects on uh, on game based learning and on different uh, subjects. There is a few uh, research that are um, about uh, game based learning and the added value of game based learning in education. Um, so I, I will uh, I will mention again the consolarium. Uh, the consolarium uh, uh, conducted a, a research about the, about training uh, training games like the Dr. Kawashima on Nintendo DS uh, to to teach mathematics, and I will mention also um, a study uh, made by Mark Peterson from the University of Kyoto. Uh, he, he underlined that um, the immersive potential of video games is really good for uh, teaching uh, languages. Uh, if you look at all this research, if you look at the, um, the gaming schools report from European Schoolnet or the, the teaching with games report from Future Lab, all the research uh, uh, insisted on the fact that it's really time consuming for teachers to use video games in the in, in, in the classroom because there is, there is a really poor integration of pedagogical issues in these softwares. So uh, 
before beginning to, to develop about the, the project I am I'm, I'm in charge of in the Academy de, de Crete, uh, I, will, uh, I will introduce um, the three uh, parts of the, of the practice I encourage and, and develop, the three kinds of practice I encourage and develop in the Academy. Uh, based on the, on the research I, uh, I read, and, uh, and uh, with the help of, uh, of some teachers that are working with me, we are trying to encourage the, the educators, uh, the teachers, and, uh, and all other uh, uh, persons um, to develop their skills in three different ways. First is the hijacking um, uh, practice. Uh, the, it means using commercial video game to teach. So products that, that, that are not uh, made for uh, learning that will be turned into a uh, learning resource by the, def the definition of a pedagogical context by, uh, by a teacher. The other uh, kind of practice is just using, using some serious games uh, this kind of games that are made for uh, for uh, for informing, for providing information, for teaching, for training, and uh, the third kind of practice is uh, is uh, creating uh, the because a lot of game-based learning strategies are based on uh, on uh, activities. Uh, on, on video game creation activities and exercise. So, right, so there is these three kinds of, uh, of different practice. So first, first practice, uh, IJAC. So there is a, a lot of different scenarios that are well uh, documented in the, in the reports I, I mentioned. Um, some uh, some of this um, some of this practice are really uh, classical, like the, like using karaoke games in uh, in, uh, in classrooms to teach uh, languages. Um, there is uh, some popular game like um, uh, Lifts on, on Xbox or SingStar on uh, on PS3. And uh, on or other really uh, classical and very uh, really popular games that are karaoke and that could be um, easily introduced into the classrooms with uh, with uh, with kids. Uh, another eye um, checking um, uh, practice is using the the series of video game called The Sims. Uh, it's uh, it's used for teaching languages, for instance. There is um, there is some uh, some teachers that uh, provided website with uh, Intel about how to use this uh, same software in, uh, in education. The the other uh, popular scenario is uh, using role playing games to teach languages, uh, but to teach also literacy, to try to analyze the, the, the way um, uh, students are, are, are using games and to encourage them in writing their path through the games and to, analyze, to, ana to make an analysis of, the path of, their, of their path into the games uh, by uh, defining uh, which are the characters that are helping them, which are the characters uh, who are uh, their enemies, and a lot of, um, of uh, activities like that. <coughs> there is a, a lot of, of a commercial game about brain, brain training. Uh, this this uh, kind of game is called brain training. So you have uh, Dr. Kawashima, for instance, um, which is really popular in, in primary school to introduce to, uh, to uh, uh, um, mathematics. There is also quiz games uh, like Buzz Quiz on, on PS3 uh, that 
that could be used in a, in a, in the classroom because you can make your own uh, quiz uh, using these games, and uh, then you can uh, propose your your quiz to the players to the to the students. And um, the the last uh, kinds of um, of uh, of softwares of uh, video games is these new kind of uh, adventure games um, with user generated contents that are part of the game and part of the gameplay. So it's really interesting to use this kind of game to teach arts and engineering, for instance. Uh, and uh, so I, I can mention the, the, the very popular game, uh, Little Big Planet, where you, you will design your own level into the game. And there is all, uh, other games like that, like um, Monation Racers. Uh, in this game, you can um, you can uh, create your own uh, your own uh, circuit. Um, to it's a game about uh, car course, about, about car challenge. So I I will just uh, try to to give you some visuals about uh, the karaoke karaoke games. Uh, with this kind of games, you have the the score that is really motivated for the for the the pupils. You also have this um, this uh, the way that the, the lyrics are, are 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 put in the game. It's uh, it's really useful for the kids because they can uh, hear the the pronunciation. They can follow the good rhythm. So it's a uh, it's a good way to to teach um, uh, English, for uh, for instance. There is this kind of game. Yeah, this kind of game are available on game console, but you can also have these games, this kind of games, on on the internet. And you can also use this game on PC or Mac. So this game, this second game is a uh, Fable. Uh, it's a really popular role-playing game um, made by uh, Peter Molino. And one, the aim, one of the major aim of the game is to uh, to to make the player realize that all the things, all the things he's doing, uh, all his choices. Uh, have uh, impact in uh, in his own uh, environment. So it could be a way to to emphasize this kind of um, of process with uh, with young kids. Second kind of, of practice, it's the uh, so the practice I'm developing with uh, with teachers in, in the Kota Academy is the use. Uh, uh, sim very simply, using game that fits the um, the, the curriculum. So we are mainly using serious games in this uh, in this uh, kind of uh, practice. So serious games are uh, games made for um, not only for entertain and for entertaining, but for um, uh, teaching, training, or or, um, or communicating. There is a, a huge amount of this game. If you check the website serious.gameclassification.com, or if you if you check the, the website in French, the second website, jeserieux.ac.fr, uh, you will have a lot of this game, and you can access them by um, uh, reading uh, articles or um, or with uh, keywords. So it, there is thousands and thousands of these games available to make uh, uh, scenarios, pedagogical scenarios. So I will present two two of these ga two two games, two series games. The first one is Passage by Jason Hoare. Which, which is an, an art game. It's called an art game um, because it's uh, really rich in terms of uh, sense and uh, of uh, aesthetic 
um, in this game, you are the the guy, I suppose it's the guy, with blonde hair, and you will, during five minutes, you will uh, cross the, the screen, and by crossing the screen, we will, you, you, will, uh, you will get older and older, then you will die. So it's, uh, it's a, a kind of a, a philosophical uh, game. The other game uh, I will present is um, it's a social impact game. It's called September 12, and it's made by an artist called uh, Gonzalo Frasca. In this game, you have the, you have this uh, you have a weapon, and you can uh, launch some uh, uh, missiles uh, missiles on uh, on a city. So you can strike uh, a city, trying to to reach the the bad guys, which are kind of terrorists, really um, really cliche, with uh, Kalashnikov and uh, and uh, um, and uh, the terrorist suit. But by trying to reach the the terrorists, you will kill civilians. Then uh, other civilians will come uh, and gather around the, the body of the dead civilian and they will mourn the body and they will turn, that, turn themselves into, into terrorists. So this game, you cannot, you cannot uh, win uh, by playing on September 12th and uh, the best way to, 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 stop the, uh, to stop the number of terrorists to increase, to, to stop the rise of the number of terrorists the best way is to not shoot at the at the, the this terrorist because if you use this um, if you use your weapon you will kill civilian and it will uh, produce some uh, some terrorists so it's um, it's it could be a, a good point to to begin a, a course on the 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 world. Uh, um, Geopolitics after uh, September 11th to, to introduce the, the the kids in history or geography about the the state of the planet and the and the balance of powers uh, after September September 12th for September 11th for uh, for instance. So as I, as I said, there is a really a huge amount of this kind of games. And uh, I'm, I'm using a lot of them with, uh, with teachers uh, for uh, for lots of different subjects like biology or or health or a lot of them. Uh, these two games, one is uh, called All Against Odds. So uh, I will try to. I will try to share the, the browser to introduce the game. So the first time I'm introducing the, I'm presenting the the game September 12th. I hope it's okay for you. I hope you are. We can see it. It's okay. It's okay? Yeah, we can okay. see it, yes. And uh, so the other one. The other one is um, is uh, against all odds. 
and it's on uh, it's a, a game made by the uh, UNHCR, the Department of the the UN uh, focused on uh, the refugee uh, politics, global global politics. And so in this game, you have um, different um, different modules, different parts of the game, and all the parts of the game. All the, the different parts of the game are documented for uh, teachers and for use in the, in the classroom. So it's a really simple game, a flash game. So for instance, in this module, you are supposed to find a, a cell phone. So you, you manage to, to pass the border. You manage to, to find a place in the new country you, you reached. Then, uh, then you will try to find a, a cell phone. And trying to find a cell phone, you will be, uh, you will be, um, you will uh, experience the the bad and good opinions uh, that people uh, have about a refugee. So I wanted to, to present uh, you some uh, some games to to give you a more precise idea of the media I was, I was talking about. So it's interactive media. Some are really simple, and some are documented uh, for uh, for teachers. Some are provided with a t with a material for teachers. And um, if you check um, uh, all against odds you will find that the game is available in uh, eight different uh, languages. So, last, um, last uh, kind of practice uh, I try to, to develop with the, with the teachers and uh, the students is creation. So, there is different tools you can use. You can use tool sets that are provided with commercial games. So, if you if you buy popular role-playing games like, like uh, Dragon Age, Dragon Age or Neverwinter Nights, you will have a tool set, and you will be able to make your own level alone or with uh, some colleagues. You can also use some um, some uh, software. So I will present two uh, two softwares, Kudu and Inform Seven. Then. Uh, you can also try to develop um, from scratch uh, serious games to teach. So uh, uh, I was uh, glad to to find um, uh, friends and uh, and partners to to develop uh, a game in my school district. The game is called uh, Dungeons and Raiden. Uh, I I am developing the game with. Um, with a, a, a private company as a partner, we this, this private company is developing the is really developing the game, and with my colleagues, some uh, uh, teachers of uh, of uh, chemistry and physics, uh, we are working as consultants in this in these games. So it's uh, it's a game to teach uh, to teach physics. Uh, the, in the team, we have game designers, programmers, researchers, teachers. Uh, we are really um, interested in trying to to introduce some very specific issues in the game, like evaluation or keeping tracks of the of the work done by the the pupils. Uh, we want an authoring tool. We want a tool set to to empower the teacher and to let the teacher to to create its own level, and uh, we also want to to introduce the misconceptions and uh, 
a scientific uh, investigation, investigation method in the, into the game. So this, uh, I think, the creating games with uh, with, uh, with students and, and, and colleagues, it's the more powerful and the more, uh, uh, in terms of impact, it's the more important uh, kind of, uh, of practice. It's really encouraged now. Uh, if you look at uh, the the U.S. Uh, education policy, uh, you you will. Um, you will find a, a new challenge, a new uh, video game creation challenge, uh, open in uh, September, uh, I think, in the, in the U.S. Uh, in my school district, we we organize a challenge, a video uh, a video game creation challenge, uh, also to encourage this kind of uh, practice. Uh, there is a lot of uh, of uh, game game maker softwares. There's uh, uh, thousands of them. Some are really simple and some are really uh, really hard. So you can uh, you can use uh, some really simple visual uh, software. Uh, then you can uh, you can have software that will introduce the the, the player to a C plus plus or or, uh, or other very uh, difficult languages. So I will try to to give you a, a quick um, a quick view of one of the of one of the one of the this tool. So it's called this tool is called Inform Seven. So with Inform 7, you can make some textual, textual adventures. You have to declare, you have to define uh, some objects in class, in, uh, in class objects, and uh, then the, the software will uh, will um, make your your different. Uh, will uh, work on your different parameters to produce uh, an adventure. So for instance, I will uh, write uh, bedroom is a room. Uh, Lucy is in the bathroom. So bathroom is a room. Uh, Lucy is a person, and uh, then I will add, add that bathroom is north from bathroom. Then I click go. And now I am in the bedroom, so I will go north. So I'm now in the bathroom, and I can see Lucy. So I will say hi to Lucy. And there is no reply. Lucy uh, uh, doesn't reply because I, uh, I didn't program the... the this, uh, this parameter. So this is one of the of the program I, I want I want you to show. The other one, uh, which is more visual, and I will uh, it will be one of my last uh, points. So this this uh, second program is Kodu. It is starting, so we will have to wait for like one 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 minute. I'll try to share it. 
It's a, it's a program to create video games in 3D. It's really, really simple. It was made to, for uh, like uh, primary school uh, students to allow them to, to create uh, video games. So I will just try to open one word to show you how it is uh, functioning. So here you are in front of your Kodu, which is the, the mascot of the, of the game. Then you can enter the editing mode. Then if you uh, select the object interface, and if you um, right-click on the and a little puppet, you can program it. And uh, it's really simple to program. You can define the function of the uh, buttons of the gamepad or the keyboard. Uh, it's really, really simple to use with, uh, with this. So just to conclude and to, to sum up, um, I will give you some uh, information about the, the program uh, and the different scale of the program I'm, I'm running in, uh, in, my, in my school district. So first of all, there is a local scale. I'm supporting the teachers, trying to, to manage their project, to, co to, to assume the coordination. And uh, I'm working on biology, health, and primary education right now. Then there is a, a regional scale of the program. Um, I'm organizing training session. I'm uh, running a, a website and a mailing list. Uh, and there is the, this challenge of creating games with students and teachers. Then there is the national scale. I will, uh, I will open a, a national uh, database about good service games and good practice. So I'm working on the on the website with the, the team of the, the of developers, and uh, I will try to to make a, a, an English version of the website, so it will be more uh, easy for uh, non uh, non French speaking um, teachers to collaborate. And then there is a, 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 new, a European scale of this project called Edu Game Lab. Um, it will start on, uh, on early May, and uh, we will organize seminars, workshops, uh, uh, try, trying to collect good practice. We will provide design patterns to some industrial partners to help them making good uh, service games to teach. And then we will try to develop a prototype uh, based on our, uh, on our collection of good practice and, uh, and uh, our collection of design patterns. So I will open a website soon, uh, in July or August. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm already running a mailing list, so if you want to be part of the mailing list, uh, the majority of the, uh, the, the sharings uh, of information uh, are in French right now, but it's possible to, to switch in English if you, are, if you are interested in participating in this mailing list. And uh, the Edu Game Lab project is uh, there is uh, six countries that are partnering: uh, French, uh, UK, Sweden, uh, Croatia, uh, Macedonia, uh, and uh, Netherlands. So I have um, I have some information I will try to to share about uh, the the person in charge of this the partners. Uh, in charge of the project for uh, uh, Croatia. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm done. If you have any uh, question. Thank you, Julian, for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, I'm sure all this information will be useful to our participants if they want to do something similar in their classrooms.
Um, after this webinar, you will all receive a link to the recording, and we will also include all the links that uh, Julian has mentioned during his presentation. Also, what you mentioned about a mailing list. Um, let's see if we have any questions from the participants. You can ask questions either orally by turning on your microphone or by using the questions and answers tool. Um, so I'm going to ask you something. Uh, for which age uh, of students are these games for? Because to me, it kind of seems that uh, there's a lot of weapons in some of them. So it, it depends on the on the on the, the teachers I'm working with because uh, I am I'm using a, a Wii game console or Nintendo DS game console with uh, uh, kids uh, around seven eight years old, but I'm also using um, um, serious games to teach the the basics of banking with uh, 16 years old or 17 years old uh, uh, students. Uh, not me, but one of my, of my colleagues uh, uh, is doing that. So there is a, a wide range of, uh, of different age groups. Uh, so for instance, the, um, the September 12th uh, game uh, is really um, about high school and about trying to to uh, to analyze the, the the violence and the uh, retaliation and revenge uh, um, politics in, uh, uh, in in the September 11 September 12 uh, um, period. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, we had Ollie Bray from UK uh, here, who also talked about using games in their classrooms. Uh, and I asked him something, and I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, do you play games yourself, and which one is your favorite? So I'm I'm playing game, but I'm not um, I'm not an hardcore gamer. So uh, I'm playing game like perhaps. Uh, Two hours a week, something like that, and it depends on the on uh, if I am on holidays or not. Uh, okay, so that's, that's not so bad. <laughs> I expected more. <laughs> so, but and uh, I'm 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 uh, playing to because it's part of my work to evaluate and uh, to propose games. So it's not to entertain myself huh. and. Uh, <laughs> The uh, and my 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 favorite games. It's more about uh, uh, about role playing game. I'm really really um, uh, I'm really impressed about the the new technologies in the uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence uh, used by the the game industry in this kind of game like uh, like Mass Effect. Or, um, or other role-playing game with a really open universe, with a new way of uh, of telling stories, with uh, uh, interactive stories and uh, systemic stories. Um, I'm really impressed by the, the the progress made in the uh, since ten years. Okay, Oli Bray uh, told us in his webinar that uh, game-based learning is actually a part of UK's curriculum. So what's the situation like in France? So in France, uh, video game is part of the curriculum, but it is, um, it is mentioned, video game uh, is mentioned in the history of arts curriculum. So you can make a project um, uh, teaching history of arts but you can also um, collaborate with the math colleague or the visual arts colleague uh, and make your project around around this um, around this uh, this entrance. But mm -hmm. it's really it's it's not so it's not so recognized as the as the teaching tool or uh, or even as a as a media uh, teachers. Uh, have to 
uh, deal with in the, in the classroom. Okay, uh, Vesna would like to know if you have any suggestions for games uh, for mathematics. Oh, for mathematics, so there is a, there is a, there is a lot of them. The last one I I tried, it's called Math Math Motion, Math Motion on iPad and uh, and uh, and Android uh, platforms. Uh, it's a really good one. Um, but you have uh, a lot of uh, different training game. You can use um, uh, Dr. Kawashima on uh, on, uh, on Nintendo. Uh, Oli, uh, Oli and Direct use this uh, this software. Uh, you can also use uh, um, uh, Brain Fist uh, Bender on on PSP um, and on 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 the internet if you. If you lack, uh, if you look at uh, some websites like Manga Manga High, Manga High, so uh, M A N G A J A uh, I uh, H I J H Manga High, it's uh, a good um, website, a uh, good platform with a lot of uh, really uh, engaging and uh, funny games uh, about math. Okay, uh, Sonia Dimitrova has an interesting question, a question and a comment. Uh, so she says, uh, serious games with a lot of youth pedagogy is great. However, not all teachers like myself are keen on using serious games with terrorists, murders, blood, weapons. Can you please tell us about your experience with students on this issue from your point of view as a teacher, keeping in mind that aggression and killing is not what we have uh, what we what we want to have as a feedback from our students? Yeah, of course. So it it was I I uh, I, um, I introduced September 12th to to give an idea of the wide wide range of uh, of uh, of resource available. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not a game that is really. Uh, Used because of the, the issue uh, about violence, and you have to really uh, master the, the subject if you use this kind of this kind of game. But um, but in fact, if you look at the the, the production of games, the the games about violence, it's uh, uh, a really it's not a ma majority of games. It's uh, it's any part of the of the of the production, but it's the this part of the production that that are the uh, most advertised, and uh, this kind of games are the the blockbusters. So it it um, but but if you look at uh, all the great games that are uh, produced by the industry, you you, you could really be impressed by. Kind of the games like Little Big Planet, which is really fantastic, to you can you can um, uh, create level with uh, with your with your students. Um, the, the, there is a really really a wide range of games, and you can make your own choice. If you develop your game culture, you can make your own choice, or choice, and you can really easily avoid violence. Uh, rudeness and uh, all these kind of, uh, of uh, notions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Snezhina Stoyanova asks if uh, if the list of games will will be available by mail and can they use them in in the classroom. Uh, I think we can arrange that, right? You can send me a list of all the games that you have mentioned, and I will forward yeah. it to the participants. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, how do you deal with students that want to play games instead of studying? I'm sure there are a lot of them uh, that you know enjoy playing games more than studying. And what's the way to prevent prevent that? It's um, it's a matter of, uh, of education. So you really have to deal with games uh, as uh, as teachers. Um, uh, uh, appropriate themselves the, the television or the the, the films uh, 
the, the movies. Uh, teachers are using movies. Teachers are using uh, TV shows. So, so you can use a video game now. And by using video game, you will. It's it's possible to to educate uh, uh, students uh, of uh, about a, a reasonable way of using video games. But when you are in the classrooms, it's um, some 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 students they are not at ease with uh, with using video games in the classroom because some students they are in the classroom to learn to make exercise so you have to convince them some of them you have to to be really good at convincing them that the the, the activities you are proposing to them the uh, the video games you are the you are playing with them in the course will add will be a, a, a way to, to for them to learn in a better way uh, because so he, the so in fact some so they, the the students they are taking games seriously when it's in the in the classroom so there is no no transgression about that and I I think that uh, by uh, introducing games you you can uh, begin a dialogue with uh, students with young generation about the reasonable uh, use of games. Okay, and uh, one last question. Uh, how do parents look at using video games in classrooms? Do they think that it's a waste of time for their children? Uh, same, same, uh, same kind of, uh, of answer. You have, to, you have to make your proof. You have to, you have to, to work out to, to build, to write a, a good uh, sequence, a good course, course sequence. By underlining the skills you want to you want to teach, uh, by um, by introducing the, the parents or your colleagues about the evaluation process, but uh, in fact the, the parents, there are majority of parents they are they trust the, the teachers and so uh, if the if the teachers if the the expert. Um, uh, choose to, to use the video games, uh, the parents will, uh, perhaps they will ask questions, but they are not, um, they are not, uh, not by principle, it. they are, yeah, yeah, they are not against, it's by principle. Some, some, of the, some of them, not only the young generations, but some of them are really, um, are really interested in, uh, about, about this kind of, uh, of, uh, of practice. Okay, great. Thank you for all the answers, and uh, thank you again for being a part of this program. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear your presentation. I wish you all the best with your future projects. Um, you. Hold on. I think Snezhana has something to say. Okay, she says, I think that kind of teaching is okay because the student will learn in a different way, uh, more fun, which is more fun than the usual one. And she says, thank you. So I think that, that's a nice thought to, for the end of the webinar. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating. Uh, join us again on, uh, on Monday when Mr. Terry Friedman will talk about introducing Web 2.0 into the classroom. If you have any comments or ideas, uh, feel free to write to us uh, using the email address that you can see on the screen. Thank you again for participating, and uh, have a nice day. And goodbye, everyone. Julian, Julian, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. I, I, and I, I apologize for my poor uh, English. No, so. no, don't apologize. It was great. Thank okay. you again. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.